Like, why would someone get the briefcase and not cash in on Roman Reigns? Like, take an event like last night when the Uso super kicked him. Why would you have a briefcase for a championship match at any time you want? Roman's laying there in the ring dead, and you wouldn't cash in on him. But you would on the United States Championship. Makes no sense. Chest up. Shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Wrestling everybody where i have better wrestling takes than you and you know it not only are we going to talk about who should win money in the bank this year in 2023 we're going to talk about money in the bank as a broader concept because i think it's really lost its luster in a lot of ways so let's begin with the match this year it's going to come down to la knight or damian priest or at least it better who else is in the match nakamura is in it very very unlikely I would think that would be a terrible decision if he did win. He just He's past that point now. His time in the main event scene has came and went, at least as far as championships are concerned. Santos Escobar, I think. Some of you might disagree with me, dude, but the whole LWO sucks. They're terrible. That entire stable is just to sell the LWO merchandise, and they're basically just riding off of Eddie Guerrero's name and his theme song. Sorry, it is what it is. I like Rey Mysterio a lot, but if Rey Mysterio was not part of that group, they would be completely irrelevant. Ricochet, he's never going to hold a world championship. He just doesn't have the charisma and the appeal like that, but Ricochet will have plenty of good spots in the match. So we have LA Knight and Damian Priest. Now, the popular Twitter pick is LA Knight. And I understand that, even though I was watching SmackDown last night whenever Jay super kicked Roman. Crazy good segment, but Santos beat LA Knight clean. And then everyone's like, oh, but LA Knight attacked him after the match to get his heat back. Dude, LA Knight is so over, he went in the ring and shoved Rey Mysterio, and he still got cheered during the match. Okay, this is what I don't understand about WWE, man. They have a guy who, I mean, even as a bad guy, the crowd's obviously cheering for him. Why not just make him a face? You can have kind of like a cocky face as long as he doesn't, you know, cheat to win and do all this other stuff, depending on the program you put him in. Like, Stone Cold and The Rock are good examples, right? Like, you can call them even tweener types. They're still hell-bent on making LA Knight this typical heel, where he only wins when he cheats or if he grabs the rope or something like that. That's how he qualified for the match. He got a handful of the rope to beat Montez Ford. He doesn't get clean wins. I mean, seriously, who has he beaten cleanly? I don't know. Has LA Knight beaten anybody cleanly? So even if he gets the briefcase, let alone the question of who is he going to cash in on, he is still not that valid from a win-loss perspective. The guy takes L after L. I told you guys in the past video, LA Knight, the LA stands for lost again. The dude's record in the past few months is what, like 2-12? He loses all the time. So do WWE does these guys such a big disservice? It's not only him. They've been doing this for years now, it seems like, unless I'm missing something. They have these guys just lose and lose and lose and lose, and then it's like, oh, well, now he's got the briefcase, so now he's going to go on a winning streak. It's like, we made him eat shit for months and months, and now he's going to win. It's like, so what you mean is you invalidated the guy. You invalidated him, he constantly loses, but now he's got the briefcase, and that's somehow going to change everything. And I think you could say the same to a lesser extent for Priest, because, I mean, dude, he lost to Bad Bunny in that Puerto Rico pay-per-view. Then he lost to Rollins, and I understand losing to Rollins, but even so, right? I mean, Damian Priest, when was his last huge noteworthy victory? I couldn't tell you. So he fits the same criteria as LA Knight to a lesser degree. So regardless of who wins, in my opinion, Damian Priest makes more sense given the current stories that are happening because Finn Balor is going to fight Rollins for the title at Money in the Bank. Seth just got the belt. I mean, it would be very stupid in my estimation to have Balor beat Seth. The best thing to do would be Damian costs Finn the match as a form of retribution because Finn got involved in his match with Rollins too. I think that's what they're going to do. Then Finn and Damian can have their own feud and you can make Finn face again. I think that's the best way to do it. So in that case, would Damian need the briefcase? I don't know. Would LA Knight need it though? This is what I'm saying, guys. Who are they going to cash in on, all right? Regardless of who wins, who are they going to cash in on? You would assume it's going to be Rollins. From the looks of things, they're going to have Roman hold the titles. Well, they had him come out with three titles last night. The two obsolete old ones came in is still carrying them. But the whole Bloodline Civil War thing is happening now. So Roman is not going to be facing anybody outside of the Bloodline for the title for a number of months, if I had to guess. Now, I know the announcers made this point the other day because uh, the NXT champion, Carmelo, whatever his name is, was in the crowd. And they're like, oh, the briefcase lets you cash in on any champion at any time. Wasn't it Austin Theory that cashed in for the U.S. championship or something? Dude, 
Is there a bigger way to bury money in the bank than to have the person that wins it? It's like, hey, look, you can have access to any championship match anytime you want. Okay, I'm going to go fight for the mid-card championship instead of the world championship. It makes no sense, dude. Like, the utter stupidity to be able to go fight for the highest prestige championship at any moment and be like, I'm going to go for the lower card one instead. What does that say about the person with the briefcase? It's like they don't even believe in themselves. I'm going to go for the lesser title because I think that's more my speed. Did you guys see too recently that Braun Breaker challenged Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship? A freaking NXT guy. I don't care how good he is or how soon they're going to call him up. He's in their developmental program. And he calls out the world champion and Rollins is like, oh, I'll come down to NXT. Oh yeah, I'll come down to the developmental promotion and fight you just because you asked for it. Are you kidding me? But this goes into the question of, has the money in the bank briefcase or contract, whatever you want to call it, has it become a curse? Because I think back to the last few years and who's won and who's done what with them. Austin Theory, if I'm not mistaken, cashing on the US Championship, which is dumb. I think Brock Lesnar won before that, and he just set up a match with Roman, which it's like, why would somebody at Lesnar's level need to do that? I think they gave it to Cena a couple years ago for the same reason, right? Just to set up a title match. Baron Corbin a few years ago, right? The beginning of his endless burial happened whenever he cashed in. I think it was on Cena, or was it on Jinder Mahal? I think it was on Jinder Mahal and Cena cost Corbin, right? So, I mean, if you're going to have somebody lose when cashing in, that's rough, man. I mean, you must really not believe in them, or you must have a long-term arc planned out. Corbin, if he had a long-term arc to return to being good, I think something would have happened by now. So, so much for that. But the money in the bank now, it's almost like an albatross around these guys' neck. Because they get it, they walk around with it, you know, you can flash it and it looks cool, and you can always come out and sort of intimidate the guy with the title by holding it up and being like, see? You cash in now, a lot of these guys, it goes back to what I said at the beginning, right? They lose and lose and lose, and they become invalidated so many ways, but then they cash in. And it's like, oh, well, he cashed in. Let's assume somebody wins. Oh, now he's got the title. And then what? Right? You give this person the title. They barely have a history. The crowd pops for the championship change because, of course, they're going to. It's a big moment in any promotion when a title changes. But then nothing happens, right? Then you'll get them involved in lackluster stories. And you know what I mean? Like, it just kind of turns into this thing where... It's like, oh my god, I got the briefcase, it was so cool and it's fun, and then you cash in, whether they win or lose, and then it's like, oh boy, what do we do now? You know what I mean? So, assuming Roman's off the table until, it very well could be WrestleMania next year, or at least a Royal Rumble or something, you would assume they're going to have Cody end up finishing the story, but even then, you think that's going to be a while, right? Like, you wouldn't imagine, assume LA Knight or Priest win, do you really think they're going to cash in on Rollins in the next couple months even? No, so they're going to hold on to it for a while. I don't know, man. The money in the bank thing, it gets so blurry because it's like, okay, the person cashing in becomes a face in the moment, right? Because the crowd is cheering, even if they're not supposed to be a face, and then WWE wants to box them in with this type of thing. I don't know, man. It's really muddy. So regardless of who wins, because Damian Priest, I believe, deserves to be on the main event level. He can wrestle. He can talk. He's got a great look. The same can be said for LA Knight. These guys both have a lot going for them. The question is... If they win, who are they going to cash in on? How long is it going to take? And please, God, do not let them cash in on some mid-card championship. Maybe Gunther, because he's had the Intercontinental Championship for so long, so it's much more prestigious now than it used to be. Even then, though, man, I think it's very hard to justify contextually why somebody would get the briefcase and not cash in on the highest-ranking champion they can. Like, why would someone get the briefcase and not cash in on Roman Reigns? Like, take an event like last night when the Uso Super kicked him, why would you have a briefcase for a championship match at any time you want? Roman's laying there in the ring dead, and you wouldn't cash in on him. But you would on the United States Championship. Makes no sense.